Welcome back to part two of the translation of The Merchant of Venice into Modern English. Everything comes from the ebook at mrbruff.com. So, Bassanio, Lorenzo, and Graciano come in, and Solanio says, Here comes Bassanio, your most noble kinsman. Graciano and Lorenzo, fare ye well. We leave you now with better company. So, in other words, you know, uh, here comes Bassanio, uh, who you love so much and also Graciano and Lorenzo. So, uh, goodbye, we're going to leave you with your friends. And after this, uh, Salarino says, I would have stayed till I'd made you merry if worthier friends had not prevented me. In other words, look, we, I would have stayed here to try and cheer you up, but now better friends of yours have arrived, so, you know, I, I'm going to let you go. And Antonio replies, your worth is very dear in my regard. I take it, your own business calls on you, and you embrace the occasion to depart. In other words, look, I really value you as a friend, but I'm assuming you've got to go and sort out some of your own business, and you're just taking this opportunity to leave. So Antonio sees through the supposedly friendly behaviour here of his supposed friends and realises they just want to get away from the grumpy one uh, in the group. Salarino says, good morrow, my good lords. In other words, you know, good day, gentlemen. And then Bassanio comes in. Good signors both, when shall we laugh? Say when. You grow exceedingly strange, must it be so? So he's saying, look, when are we going to get together and have a good laugh? You, you name the date. We haven't met up for ages and we mustn't leave it so long. And Salarino says, we'll make our leisures to attend on yours. Now, this is a clever line. You know, well, we'll fit in with your availability. In other words, you get hold of us and off they go. And then we have Lorenzo who says, my Lord Bassanio, since you found Antonio, we too will leave you. But at dinner time, I pray you have in mind where we must meet. In other words, look, Bassanio, since you've bumped into Antonio and you've got his company, we're going to go off, but we'll meet again at dinner time. And Bassanio says, I will not fail you. In other words, I won't let you down. And Graciano says, you look not well, Signor Antonio. You have too much respect upon the world. They lose it that do, bury it, uh, do buy it with much care. Believe me, you are marvellously changed. So in other words, look, Antonio, you're not looking very happy. You're thinking about worldly things too much. And if you value things too highly, you're going to lose them. I can see that you're really not yourself. And Antonio says, I hold the world but as the world, Graciano, a stage where every man must play a part and mine a sad one. So a very famous line, of course, from Shakespeare. Antonio is saying, well, to me, the world is just the world. It's a stage. Everybody's got a part to play. And my part is a sad part. And Graciano then uh, responds in quite a long speech. And it's interesting when people are sad, when Antonio is sad, his friends try to solve the problem. And I think that's something we can relate to, isn't it? When sometimes you don't want the problem solved, but everybody's trying to sort of sort it out. So Graciano says, let me play the fool. With mirth and laughter, let old wrinkles come. And let my liver rather heat with wine than my heart cool with mortifying groans. Why should a man whose blood is warm within sit like his grandsire cut in alabaster? sleep when he wakes and creep into the jaundice by being peevish i tell thee what antonio i love thee and it is my love that speaks there are a sort of men whose visages do cream and mantle like a standing pool and do a willful stillness entertain with purpose to be dressed in an opinion of wisdom gravity profound conceit as who should say i am sir oracle and when i open my lips let no dog bark O oh, my Antonio, I do know of these, that therefore only are reputed wise for saying nothing, when I am very sure if they should speak would almost damn those ears, which, hearing them, would call their brothers fools. I'll tell them the more of this another time, but fish not with this melancholy bait for this fool gudgeon, this opinion. Come, good Lorenzo, fare ye well a while, I'll end my exhortation after dinner. A long speech what does it mean? Well, basically, he's saying, you know, I, well, I will play the part of a fool with merriment and fun, get laughter lines and choose to cheer myself up with wine rather than to deny myself and be miserable. Why should a hot blooded male act like this cold, pale grandfather, the walking dead and gradually become cynical through being discontented? I'm saying this, Antonio, because I love you and I'm speaking out of love for you. 
There are some men whose faces appear on the surface like a stagnant pond. They choose to keep a straight face in order to give the appearance of wisdom, seriousness and great self-importance. Uh, as if to say, I am the font of all knowledge and when I speak not even a dog should bark. Oh, my Antonio, I know that sort, that are only thought to be wise because they say nothing. And when I am convinced that if they spoke, it would shock the ears of their listeners, who would realise that they are fools. I'll talk about this with you another time, but don't go around with the appearance of sadness and get this reputation. Come on, Lorenzo, bye for now. So it seems that everybody's misunderstanding Antonio and his sadness. Lorenzo says, well, we will leave you then till dinner time. I must be one of these same dumb wise men, for Graciano never lets me speak. In other words, I'm going to finish my inspiring speech after dinner, and I must be one of those people you've just he's just spoken about, the dumb fonts of all knowledge, because Graciano never lets me get a word in edgeways. Graciano responds with, um, well, keep my... Uh, company but two years more thou shalt not know the sound of the, thine own tongue in other words well if you stick with me for another couple of years you'll find you're going to forget the sound of your own voice you know you'll hardly speak at all so it's all very humorous and light-hearted and Antonio says farewell I'll grow a talker for this gear in other words he's saying look goodbye you know you've motivated me to speak Graciano says, thanks in faith, for silence is only commendable in a neat tongue dried and a maid not vendable. In other words, you know, that's great because I we only want people to be silent um, and it's only appreciated um, from dried ox tongue and old maids. And uh, Graciano and Lorenzo exit, leaving us with Antonio and Bassanio for the next video.